issues concerning carnival mainly um, we're going to talk to you about the recent launch in Trinidad of Grenada Spice Mask, uh, the upcoming traditional mass exhibition and competition, the progress at Carnival City and uh, other issues surrounding Carnival Spice Mask 2011. This morning we have with us at our head table Senator Ardy Gill, the Minister with Responsibility for Information, Culture and ICT and uh, Colin Dock, the chairman of the Grenada Carnival Committee. Uh, without any further ado, I'm going to take it over to Senator Gill. Before getting into the carnival uh, activities, he's going to tell you a little bit about the cultural ambassador program that we have uh, within the Ministry of Information, Culture, and ICT. Senator Gill. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Pleasant good morning to all the members of the press. We are very delighted that you're here with us and here again you are playing your role with regards to disseminating information to the world. I want to begin this morning by making an announcement with regards to a cultural ambassadors program. We have embarked on a cultural ambassadors program whereby uh, we seek to recognize and emulate um, outstanding Grenadians in the field of culture. Uh, the program is designed in such a way uh, where it, 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 we do not have to pay the ambassadors any monies or anything like that, but we do honor them. Um, it is a way of national recognition and honor them in the field of culture for their um, contribution over the years. Um, some of the guidelines that we have adopted in going about to select the ambassadors, um, one, you know, someone must have long and distinguished service in the art form, in the area of the art form. So that, that is a, that is a, a marker for us. Um, we will say, you know, long service, you know, 20 years or thereabouts in, in a particular art form. And of course, distinguished service, outstanding service, whereby your peers, not just locally, but regionally, internationally, um, appreciate and respect you for what you do, so that outstanding service is extremely important. Um, the person, of course, should be Grenadian by birth or descent, um, because, it is, because it is a national program. And we also look at um, the person with regards to character. Um, while we do not expect um, persons to be saint-like in character, we believe at the same time that um, they must not have the trappings of rogues basically, and that if your country has appointed you to, to uh, be a cultural ambassador as such, you know, you should be of some repute that um, you do not uh, in any way um, disgrace the country's name. So we have uh, embarked upon this program. Um, the names that I'm going to read out to you this morning um, are the first persons in the batch of cultural icons that we are emulating as such. In other words, this is not an exhaustive list. Um, next year, the year after, we will expect to name other cultural ambassadors. So I know that once we announce these names, the argument or the discussion will start, well, why wasn't X, why was not Y, why was not P? But the fact of the matter is that we cannot do everybody in the same year. The idea is that we start the program, and over the year, and um, over the next couple of years, we, we, we emulate persons as we go along in different fields of culture. So it is not an exhaustive list. And um, the idea is that next year, the year after, as whoever is in the seat of culture will see fit, the leadership of culture will see fit, other cultural ambassadors will be appointed. That is the thinking. Of course, um, you will be aware that uh, under the previous administration, um, some of our Calypsonians in particular uh, were emulated. Um, Elwin McQuilkin, the Black Wizard, Edson Mitchell, the Ajamo, Sheldon Douglas, Randy Isaac, and Elaine Gilbert. 
those were persons who were emulated um, under the last um, administration. So I want to announce without further ado um, the persons that the government, the cabinet has appointed. Ministry of Culture, of course, would have made the submissions and cabinet has to, would have had deliberations and discussions and debate and the cabinet has approved the following persons in the different um, cultural art forms or genre um, as cultural ambassadors. The first person is Mr. Wilt Cambridge. Mr. Wilt Cambridge, better known as Talpri. He's a cultural ambassador. Talpri has been so awarded because of his phenomenal representation for Grenada in Soka over the years. Um, he is arguably our biggest name in the region and in the world, and he's one of the leading Soka artists in the world. Um, of course, um, Old Woman alone um, gave him fame and acclaim regionally and internationally ten, some 10 or 11 years ago. And of course, over la his last massive hit, um, Wicked Jab, has taken him around the world again as one of the premier soccer artists in the region. And of course, this year he's celebrating 20 years in the business. But of course, um, Talpri's contribution to soccer and the national and the regional international recognition that he receives, we believe that um, Wills Cambridge is worthy of being an ambassador. The other person we have in the field of Calypso is Finley Jeffrey, the scholar. Scholar, of course, um, is the second most successful Calypsonian coming from Grenada. Edson Mitchell, the Ajamo, has won the crown seven times. Finley Jeffrey has won the crown six times. Six, he has won the Calypso crown six times and was once a Soka monarch king as well. I think all of us here are aware of the phenomenal contribution that Finley Jeffrey has given to the art form. He does standing writing. He's a Calypsonian with a wide repertoire of songs. Um, he has done rap so, he has done soca. His song Permission was given, Permission to Marshal the Place, was given a regional award. He has represented Grenada at Cary Festa and has come in fifth. And he has been a prolific writer for the better part of 20 years or thereabouts. And we believe that his contribution to the development of the Calypso art form in Grenada is worthy of emulation. So scholar, the Finley Jeffrey, is a cultural ambassador. The other ambassador we wish to announce is Mr. David Peck Edwards. David Peck Edwards, of course, is the Panarranger Ranger leader of New Dimension Steel Orchestra. More than that, Mr. Peck Edwards have worked all, if most, if not all of his adult life as the pan director, arranger, teacher in the Ministry of Culture. And he is responsible in large measure for the development of pan in Grenada in that he has tutored most of the young panists um, on the island and has trained most of the trainers in pan. So his work in terms of development of playing pan in this country I think um, is second to none and is without reproach. Um, and more than that, he has led his band to many, many times they have won the Panorama Championship. In fact, this year they have already won the first official competition of Spice Mars, the Bomb Tree competition. So Mr. David Peck Edwards, for all his years in the vineyards of, 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 of Pan and the development of Pan in this country, we believe that Mr. David Peck Edwards is more than fitting that we emulate him and recognize him nationally as a cultural ambassador in this country. So Mr. David Peck Edwards. The other person that we wish to announce um, as a cultural ambassador in the field of mass, Mr. Lazarus Antoine. Mr. Lazarus Antoine, of course, hails from River Sally in St. Patrick's. And for years, Mr. Lazarus Antoine has continued to produce what beautiful mass, wonderful mass, has continued to do a lot of work among the young people in the River Sally and the environs for many years. Um, although he resides outside of Grenada, he comes to Grenada really justly to, 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 put, to put, um, portray his mass, to design his mass, to construct his mass. Um, 
we believe that Mr. Lazarus and Twine's contribution to the development of mass in Grenada, to the sustenance of mass, the, 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 the preservation of mass in Grenada is worthy of emulation. And we believe that Mr. Lazarus and Twine is worthy of being a cultural ambassador for Grenada. The other ambassador that we want to announce today is Mr. Francis Urias Peters in the field of theater and dramatic arts. I think Mr. Francis Urias Peters does not need any introduction. We know of the burial of Ms. Faitlin and the many plays that he has written and directed and the contribution he has made to the dramatic arts in Grenada is beyond reproach. And the cabinet has decided that Mr. Francis Urias Peters is worthy of being a cultural ambassador of this country for his work that he has done. All his years of work with young actors, young actresses, bringing them up, and so on as a cultural director. And not only um, he himself as a performer, he himself as an actor, but he has uh, taught many um, courses at Tamsisi and other institutions and so on with regards to uh, persons in the performing, in the performing art. And um, he's definitely one of our leading person in theater and dramatic arts. So Mr. Francis Urias Peters. The other ambassador that we want to announce is Mr. Ricardo Kings Douglas. Mr. Ricardo Kings Douglas and we say for popular culture. Mr. Ricardo Kings Douglas wear many hats. Everyone knows of him in theater and the dramatic arts. Everyone knows of him in storytelling. He's an author of books. He's a leader of a mass band. So with popular culture. So we're looking at dramatic and his contribution in dramatic and theater arts, his contribution in uh, mass, his contribution in literature, his contribution in storytelling, his contribution in poetry, you name it. Um, Ricardo has distinguished himself um, the wide spectrum of, of, of cultural art forms as we have, um, as I have said, not only in Grenada, but in North America as well. He has received um, national acclaim as well as international acclaim for his work. Not Meg Princess, I believe, needs no introduction to no journalist, I would hope, in this country. And as such, we believe that Ricardo Kings Douglas, for his sterling contribution to popular culture in Grenada, is deserving of the accolade of a cultural ambassador. The other person we want to acknowledge and we have given such uh, recognition is Mr. Winston Flery of Carico. And if you appreciate culture, Mr. Winston Flery for folk culture, Mr. Winston Flery is a indisputably the leader of the big drum nation dance in Garico for many, many years. The dance, the drum, the African culture, the African traditions. Um, in fact, uh, Mr. Flery, of the Temne people, um, and that's a, I would not say tribe, it's an ethnic group from Sierra Leone. That dance is one of the Kariku is one of the few places in the world, if not the only places in the world, that the Temne dance has survived outside of Africa. Right? And so the rich culture that the folk culture of Kariku, the Big Drum Nation dance in particular, that, um, we, we, that we are so proud of, Kariku is one of the few places in the world outside of Africa where it survives. And Mr. Winston Flurry has done more than a fair share to ensure that that part of our culture has, has, has been preserved. Um, we believe Mr. Flurry right now is out of, out of the state. He's in New York um, doing a series of lectures on Grenadian and Caracol culture and so on and so forth. Um, Mr. Flurry, of course, um, for most of his, and, and he's, he's a reservoir of, of, of Caracol an African history on the island. And um, we believe that Mr. Winston Flery um, deserves even more than the accolade of a cultural ambassador. He is indeed one of our outstanding cultural uh, practitioners. And we are proud today to say to, to Mr. Flery,
that the government has recognized his efforts and his contribution and has um, given him the title of cultural ambassador. Final person that we want to give that accolade that they, is Miss Maul Collins for literature. Maul Collins has been for many years our foremost uh, Grenadian writer, poet, author. Um, last year she was one of our featured writers in the first Spice World Festival. She lectures in the university in the United States of America. But Mo's book, um, she has flagged the, fly the Grenada flag for many years in literature and, and the production of, of, of literary works. Um, she has now gone into documentary um, of different aspects of Grenadian culture. Um, I think Maul needs no introduction, but Maul has um, performed here just recently as October of last year. And Maul Collins, of course, is one of our, our gifts to the world, so to speak. And um, in the area of literature, um, we believe that a fitting accolade for Miss Maul Collins um, along to be an ambassador, a cultural ambassador of Grenada. So that is that completes our list, just to run through the names that we have um, spoken about. The cultural ambassadors are as follows. Mr. Wilth Cambridge, Talpri, Finley Jeffrey, Scholar, David Peck Edwards, Francis Iras Peters, Ricardo Kings Douglas, Winston Fleury, Lazarus Antoine, and Moel Collings are our first um, batch of uh, cultural ambassadors. We believe that the cabinet has agreed to issue all of these ambassadors uh, official passports um, for traveling purposes. And uh, we in the Ministry of Culture and the Ministry of Tourism, we believe that these ambassadors should be, ought to, and must be used um, in promoting our culture and indeed our country. Um, so those are the first person that we've selected as I want to emphasize that this is not an exhaustive list. Everybody cannot be appointed. And for instance, there is no one in the field of visual arts this year, but we hope that, for instance, next year we will consider persons um, for visual arts. We cannot do every person in one year. We cannot cover every cultural art form in one year. We cannot cover every person that has made a stunning contribution to culture in one year. This is only the beginning of what we refer to as our cultural ambassadors program. The vision is we will continue to emulate, we will continue to recognize persons who have um, made outstanding contributions to Grenada in the field of culture. Thank you. There are three different types of passports that the country has. You have, all of us carry ordinary passports. Yes, that's the blue ones. And the ministers of government and diplomats, we, the leader of the majesty's opposition, carry diplomatic passports. That's a red one. There is a green one that is called official passports. So there are three different levels. So you have the blue one, which is the ordinary passports that we all have. You have the official passports and then you have the diplomatic passports. Those passports are going to be for a lifetime? No. All passports, um, all passports are issued um, for a period of five years. I believe that we amended the legislation now for not, no more ten years but for five years. Um, the idea is as long as these persons remain cultural ambassadors, they will have the passports. Um, the government, of course, reserve the right to, um, as, as in any other ambassadorial position, to recall an ambassador. In other words, we appoint these persons and we, we pray that these persons would, would, be of, would continue to be of good character personally and, and, and in culture. 
if it is that um, the government, whichever government it is, um, believes that such an honor is no longer deserving of that person, of course, the government, whichever government will reserve the right to, to recall. So that portfolio could be revoked at any time? It can be revoked. It can, it can be revoked at any time. The appointment of the cultural ambassador can be revoked, and of course, um, all of the privileges that, that goes with it can be recalled. What are those privileges? Well, um, as I said, uh, an official passport, um, near you, and so not everybody is entitled to that. Um, also, what we are endeavoring to do as we continue to develop the cultural products of this country, cultural industries, and as we continue to, as I would say, take Grenada to the world and market our culture, we believe that um, those persons um, are some of the first persons we should call on to assist in marketing and selling their country. And of course, I hope that um, in, your, in, your, in, your, in your writing as a journalist, you will, from no one, refer to them as ambassador. So when you write about Talpi, you say ambassador Talpi. When you read about him in the news, you say ambassador Talpi. You know you have King Jamu, so now Talpi have a little thing in front of him called ambassador. You know, in other words, it's, it's to emulate, it's to recognize, it's to appreciate what people have done for us. As a nation, it's time that we, become, that, that we, we show gratitude to people who have made sterling contributions. Sometimes I think we are ungrateful. I think it's time that we show gratitude to people. Quickly, you did indicate that, of course, the ambassador positions can be revoked. How long are they expected so far in the first instance or until that time? No, nah, right now, there's no time limit to it. Uh, we, we, there's no time limit as it is now. Um, it is not good. Those persons we expect will continue to be cultural ambassadors and continue to push and promote our culture. So they, it's right to say they would serve for life on, to, unless Unless something has happened that it is revoked. That, that, that they will tell me. Exactly. Yes. So they still for life. Yes. Mm -hmm. So Ambassador Tabri for life. Yes, um, Ambassador Tabri. That's his name. <laughs> okay. Um, playing with Senator Gill, we're going to know uh, <coughs> some feedback from the recent uh, launch of Spice Mats in Trinidad. That's what we call it, isn't that? Um, well, we'll go with Mr. Dow. Thank you very much, um, Madam Chair, and a uh, pleasant day, despite the weather. Um, first of all, allow me to, on behalf of the Grenada Carnival Committee, to congratulate the persons named ambassadors, cultural ambassadors. Um, Talpri, David Peck, Scholar, Yuyu, Ricky, Mr. Flery, Lazarus, and of course, Dr. Collins. We are indeed heartened that um, with some of the first persons named as cultural ambassadors are intimately related to Carnival. Um, and while I do appreciate all of the persons called, we certainly would like to say thank you to the government of Grenada for recognizing persons who have contributed to our largest cultural festival, which is Carnival, by naming them cultural ambassadors. As I move on to the launch, the government of Grenada, along with the uh, Grenada Board of Tourism, had a number of launches outside of Grenada that we are aware of, London and Toronto, and the GCC joined in the um, exhibition of Spice Mass along with GBT, uh, GBT and the Ministry of Culture in Trinidad. The event turned out to be an extremely exciting one. Um, we were able to do a minimum of six different radio stations, four television stations, sharing on what we can expect of Spice Mass 2011, sharing with Trinidadians what the carnival calendar looked like, hailing the last lap carnival of the region, which is Spice Mass, and inviting them to join us at the Hyatt Regency Hotel where the actual mini trade show um, took place and the carnival launch. Through the Grenada Board of Tourism, there were some 22 different properties represented at the Hyatt Regency. 12 hoteliers um, physically present, another 10 represented 
by the executive director of the Grenada Hotel and Tourism Association. From reports by the hoteliers, it was the largest mini trade show that they have had in Trinidad. We had close to 300 persons attending that mini trade show. And for the first two hours or thereabouts, the persons from the audience made up of travel agents, uh, transportation persons, promoters, etc., were able to interact with the various hoteliers. They were able to share the packages that they have at their properties and the specials carried for carnival. Those specials, uh, in some instances, involved nights at the hotel, air travel, along with tickets to the various shows because the GCC has a number of collaborations with a number of hotels in Grenada where the, the um, guests can have access at discounted costs to the various shows for carnival. We recognize that the, this was a massive opportunity um, and we expect it to bear fruit in 2011. Typically, when one carries on a marketing campaign, it is for futuristic, 2012, 2013. But the response that we got from Trinidad and Tobago was so heartwarming that we are very confident that we will see the numbers coming from 2011. This, of course, also facilitated by the increased flights that has been put on through the introduction of Caribbean Airlines with some 24 flights weekly and of course the stalwart service that has been provided by Liat. Both airlines were actually represented at the launch. I must also add that we had the Skittle Bunch Steel Orchestra joining us at the Hyatt. We have almost adopted them as you, some of you may be familiar. They were a part of the Grenada launch complements this TCL group and the distributors here in Grenada, George F. Huggins and L.L. Ramdani and company, um, along with a number of Grenadian artists. The cultural part of the program was hosted by Lincoln, uh, Lyndon, sorry, Fatman George, and we had Ambassador Talpri, along with um, Brother B, Zingo, Miney, um, were also performers at the launch in Trinidad. Uh, the event was highly successful and it is something that, as I said, we are very pleased with and we do anticipate having returns, not only in the future, but we certainly expect to see some returns in 2011. Um, there were also special meetings held with the Minister of Arts and Multiculturalism, Winston Gypsy Peters, along with the Chairman of the National Carnival Commission, Mr. Kenrick De Silva. I would allow um, Senator Gill to speak as to the fruits that were born as a result of those meetings and then carry on with the other things related to Carnival thereafter. As the chairman pointed out, we had meetings with um, Winston Gypsy Peters and Krista De Silva um, to follow up specifically with regards to the breaches, the roadside breaches which we spoke of earlier on this year. And we can confirm that um, the government of Trinidad and Tobago, through its Minister of Arts and Multiculturalism, um, has kindly um, assented to providing us with those bleachers for carnival. Um, as we speak, the different me measurements and specifications um, for the areas where those bleachers will be at. Um, those things have been worked on now to be um, sent to our um, counterparts in Trinidad. Also, um, Trinidad is not just providing us with the, with, the, with, the, with the breaches, but they have gone further than we requested and they're providing us with boots, movable boots, so that um, for Carnival, um, you will have information centers around the carnage. Um, that we can use boots and so on, so, so that not just for carnival, but for tourism generally, um, we should be able to bring some of the information and services and so on um, right to the people um, using the boots as well as um, the, 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 the roadside bleachers that we spoke about. Um, other trailers has offered us um, more support in terms of marketing and promoting Grenada Carnival in Trinidad and we are extremely grateful um, for the generosity 
of the Minister of Arts and Multiculturalism in Trinidad and the government of Trinidad and Tobago for providing us with an opportunity uh, in Trinidad to, to promote a market. Um, the launch was one, as Mr. Dow pointed out, but we were able to um, go to all of the major media houses in Trinidad, all of them, radio and television in particular. And in fact, um, the, the Guardian had, had, had did a really nice feature article on the launch of its own as well. I think that um, finally, we have really and truly engaged the Trinidad market in terms of uh, persons coming here um, to, to Trinidad. We have invited Minister Peters to be with us um, for Spice Mass, and he has kindly consented as well um, to grace us with this presence. So we, we expect um, quite a, a, a large um, amount of persons from Trinidad coming up for Spice Mass. Um, just one addition to the cast as uh, on the attending the launch, Minister Peters, and he always likes the gypsy to be included. So Winston Gypsy Peters was present at the launch. And the boss himself, Neil Iwa George, joined us at the launch and actually performed at the launch. So when I did mention earlier on the TCL group schedule bunch being adopted, um, Neil Iwa George claimed his war route and also performed at the launch at the Hyatt Regency. Um, just to add on the, I think the next aspects is just some general updates on Carnival. Carnival City is a new introduction brought back by the GCC since last time hell was in 1987. Um, and it has been going well. It is a new product, but the lull that traditionally plagued us after the launch and prior to the Soka Mana quarterfinals is no more. We are very hopeful that this initiative will be built upon as we move forward next year, but we can guarantee whenever the GCC is not hosting another event, every Thursday and Sunday at the Fort Matthew Carnival City, there will be carnival type activities. Persons have been coming out in their hundreds, as it were, um, to attend the various events. We have not yet had a full house, so for those who have not yet attended, don't believe it's Ram Cram, it's not. Um, but it is a wonderful venue. It is rich with traditions, which is in keeping with the theme of this year's carnival. And we are actually quite pleased that the Ministry of Tourism was able to and willing to collaborate with us in order for us to host Carnival City at the Fort Matthew location. Soka Monarch, GCC Lime Soka Monarch quarterfinals kicked off last night um, and we had some 35 artists um, facing the judges on night one. That was at Cutbutt Peters Park in Guelph. Again, we had uh, well, you know, a couple hundred, about 200 plus or there about brave souls coming out in the rain, thunder, and lightning to support the artists at Cutbutt Peters Park in Guelph. And I mention these things, the support for Carnival City, the support for the GCC Lime Soka Monarch quarterfinals, because as an organizing committee, we are indeed grateful and thankful to the Grenadian public for the support that they have lent us. Um, the first competition, the bomb tune competition that took place at the Tanti Netball Court, saw so close to 400 patrons coming out to support Steel Band. And that's important. When you put on a competition, you put it on not just for yourselves, you put it on not just to pay out prize monies, but you put it on to entertain and engage the public in quality entertainment. And um, it is indeed heartening to see the type of support that has taken place thus far this season. And we are extremely confident that we are on the eve of a big one. We are on the eve of a very good and strong Spice Mass 2011. The Suka quarterfinals moved to Victoria tonight at 8 p.m. on the hard court. Another 35 artists would be facing the judges. On Saturday night, we'll be at the Fur Recreation Ground. We're hopeful that the weather cooperates with us because we know that there can be some logistical challenges if it's raining continuously. Um, again, that will be at 8 p.m. And then the last suggests natural works location on Sunday, 
that show begins at 7. I would just also like to signal, encourage persons and remind the persons that in keeping with the theme, uniquely rooted in our rich ancestral traditions, the traditional mass exhibition and competition will take place on July 23rd. We had another follow-up meeting with the leaders within the traditional mass fraternity yesterday and through that meeting we are having out some of the logistics um, the human resource challenges on delivering the traditional mass exhibition and competition the financial challenges of delivery on this we now have good information in order to accomplish successfully the traditional mass exhibition and the competition um, this is a new introduction to Spice Mass. It is extremely important that this is done. We heard the government naming Mr. Flaherty for folk culture, and he has been one of the stalwarts in attempting to preserve the cultural heritage, not just of Karaku, but Karaku, Piti Martinique, and Grenada. We believe that the traditional mass exhibition and competition is one of the steps that we can take to preserve that culture. There are a number of things that we have lost. Patois is one example that jumps to mind that we have lost. We cannot afford to lose Shockney. We cannot afford to lose Veco. We cannot afford to lose the Juju Warriors, the Mud Mass, and the Maypole and Apache Mass that has been played in Grenada over the years. It is important that we share with persons how to play those masks, the genesis, origins, history of that mass and to get persons to buy in so that there can be sustainable development in these unique cultural art forms. These unique cultural art forms, we know and we are confident, will, what will be what will confirm Grenada's place on the carnival circuit of being a special carnival and bring it the notoriety because it is our unique selling proposition. As we position Spice Mask, it is extremely important that we play to our strengths. We know that Juve Morning is one of our strengths, but traditional mass is also an important feature that we need to develop. We need to make sure it is on sound footing, and through that, traditional mass exhibition and competition on July 23rd, we believe it will be one step in accomplishing just that. Um, I will break here, and I believe there may be some questions coming from you, read Carnival, that we'll be happy to respond to or certainly the things that would have taken place in Trinidad that minister might be able to address. Minister Dillingham, with respect to the bleachers and um, the boots we carry from Trinidad, is there any cost being incurred by Trinidad for those? Well, we have to ship them. We will, we will incur the, the expense with regards to shipping, but we're not paying in Trinidad for any rental or anything like that. Um, we are responsible for shipping up to Grenada and shipping out on the Trinidad. Because these bleachers and uh, boots are collapsible. Every year they use the carnival, collapse, put into a container and stored for the next year. Um, maybe in the years to come we'll have our own um, bleachers and so on, but for now it is economical and cheap for us to um, get it on loan from Trinidad and bring it up, put it, sit, put it up, collapse it and then send it back. Now, gentlemen, with the confidence you expressed in the large um, number of people coming from Trinidad to Spice Pass, was there any indication coming from the airlines as to additional flights? Definitely. I spoke with Chiron Airlines uh, marketing manager up to yesterday, and we are uh, due to have further conversations today. Um, once the demand is great, not just out of Trinidad, once the demand is great out of New York as well, uh, we are engaged with Caribbean Alliance to do additional flights. Yeah. Well, I can speak, well, the have, over the years, um, supported Spice Mass and supported Grenada, and I believe once the market demands additional flights, we'll get the, we, we'll get Leah to do additional flights. But we do have that kind of engagement with Caribbean Alliance. Any questions? Any controversial issue that you want us to address? <laughs> Anything? And I, I, I must say it is indeed heartening that we're sitting here one month away from Carnival being July 8th and there aren't any controversial issues um, that, 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 that is being put forward uh, by, by the media. Um, it either means something is very wrong 
or something is very right for 2011. <laughs> Next week, um, Spice Mass Corporation should be um, up and running. We are now awaiting the assent from the Governor General. That is that that is what we are waiting now. But all the procedures in terms of um, uh, yesterday, we, we worked with the the printry to get the, to to get the number for the app for the bill. All of those things um, should be sorted out by today and hopefully by next week will be assented to by the Governor General. So we on track to have the first carnival under the auspices of, of the Spice Mass Corporation. What's the structure of that corporation? Uh, uh, the, the, the structure of the corporation is like, is like most other sanitary corporations or companies. You have a board of directors, you have a CEO and staff, basically. Um, the idea is that as we have, uh, as we are now, what we do have is that every year we have a committee running carnival. Um, on that previous dispensation, every year the chairman of the committee was changed, the committee was changed. Since we got in the government, we have kept the same chairman, we have kept the same committee. And that is important because you need some kind of consistency. And persons in, on the committee would learn year after year after year. So what we are doing is, is basically um, persons who are on the committee now will form the core of the board of directors of the Spice Mass Corporation for continuity, naturally, so that we just simply collapse the committee into the board of directors and then we get the staff on the board. So it's seamless, absolutely seamless um, transformation from the, com from the committee into the corporation. Location already from for staffing? How's the staff? For now, we share premises with the Marina Cultural Foundation. Yes, over the National Stadium, where all of the carnival registration and administration takes place. But um, to be honest with you, I, I, I would like to have a, 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 a tower building for carnival <laughs> and culture in this country. <laughs> but no, we, we don't have individual space yet. We we want the cultural foundation. So, but those issues would be would be would be handled in the next couple of weeks. It's my understanding speaking of PCF that there's a new head at PCF. There's a new CEO at GCF, Mr. Livingston Nelson. Yes. Um, I was just asked by Ms. McIntyre to share a little bit on the, the rollout of the traditional mass competition. Uh, the bands, the, the R registration forms that are available for all traditional mass bands that are interested in participating in the competition. It's available at the Carnival Secretariat at the National Stadium. They are available online at, at, the, at the Spice Mask Grenada website, www.spicemaskgrenada.com. They're also available from the various presidents of the parish committees. So persons who would have bands or as individuals willing to participate in the traditional mask competition, they can register to do so. Um, we anticipate having Moko Jumbies, Juju Warriors, Wild Indians, Shortney, Veco, Maypole. Those six categories of traditional mass we anticipate having at that competition. The, ex the exhibition begins at 3 p.m. in Victoria, in St. Mark. The bands will gather at 3 p.m. and begin a street parade. The gathering will take place uh, close to the grounds of the Bonaire Government School and they will proceed down Jubilee, Street down. So, <laughs> I, I, I must give way to Miss Cosby, who is from Victoria. So it's down Diamond, down Diamond, down Diamond across down Jubilee, Jubilee, up St. David. David. And there will be several loops that will be taking place. So it's not a one wrong affair. Um, it will be an opportunity where traditional mass gets its space. When Spice Mass unfolds on Carnival Monday and Tuesday, there are so many competing activities that we believe that the traditional mass are deserving of having their own space, their own time, be put on the platform that is deserving of the traditional mass and hence the reason for this. Um, so essentially that's uh, how the parade itself will take place. 
in the area of Hero Square, there will be an exhibition uh, where the hotels, the history, genesis, etc., of the um, traditional mass in all its forms will be there. The competition will be twofold a competition both in terms of the participating bands as well a competition in the boots, the quality of the boots, the depth of the research, etc. Awards will be presented for all of this during that particular competition. Uh, question. I know there have been a lot of talks about the dying elements of carnival. Yeah. Some of the dying elements, the traditional elements that's been dying. The cooperation that's been formed, what structures is, it, is going to be set up to us to ensure that some of the plans that has been rolled out over the last three years and that's been rolled out this year, as you said, will be continuing, continuing over, let's say, the next 10, 20 years. Because many times, as you said, as in, in regards to the past years, whenever the government changes, every year they would have changed the, 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 the chairman of GCC. What structure is going to be put in place to ensure that there's continuity so that we don't have a case, okay, you have a vision, two years from now it dies and we go back to square one. How is, what structure is going to be set up just to ensure that there's continuity in all of these plans and projects? Um, I, I, I'm going to preempt the minister because we speak in our cooperation. He's the one that actually should be speaking of it. I am merely the chair of the GCC, um, which comes to an end in 2011, of course, because the GCC will be no more. Um, but in the vision for the rollout, the cooperation will be a statutory body with a board of directors, as explained by the minister, with hired staff, staff that will be working year-round. What we have done as a GCC recognizing this vision, we have took on one staff member, that is an administrative assistant, who is essentially getting her feet wet during Spice Mass 2011. And it is our hope that the cooperation, when named, will give their blessings to this particular appointment. So you will have someone who would have gone through the workings of Spice Mass 2011, be exposed to some of the visions, plans, etc., of this particular GCC and be able to continue. Of course, if a board changes, the vision of the board may change. Um, the, a, a new board may take a look at what has happened and seek alternative ways of putting on a better product. And that's fine. Even the same board should do the same constant review. But I think the naming of a staff um, and having persons engage in the business of Carnival year-round will ensure the type of continuity that you, that you refer to. What is also important is that from my exposure to GCCs in the past, there has not been a shortage of ideas. There have been a shortage of support, both financial and human resource. The staffing would allow persons to be engaged year-round in seeking financial support through sponsorship, through activities that can serve as fundraisers. That essentially would be their jobs. In, make, in speaking to the traditions, by having that full-time staff, then some of the developmental things that are necessary for the successful delivery of Carnival on the second Monday and Tuesday of August can actually occur again by having people full-time being engaged with the business of Carnival. So you will notice, as I speak to it, there is an air of confidence that whereas the Spice Mass Corporation will not solve all problems, it certainly can address some of the major issues that ad hoc committees like the GCC have been playing with in the past. Well, just for my part, um, the, the politician in me is tempted to answer you by saying that you need to ensure, as a voter, that I remain in self -conscious. That is a safe way. <coughs> that is an extremely safe way to keep the vision of the Spice Pass Corporation and culture in this country going where it's going. Having said that though, um, just to echo what the chairman pointed out, the mere fact of the setup of the Spice Mass Corporation is to put in place structures. Um, for years, everybody knew, we complain every year, for years, many years, since independence, that every year we have a new carnival committee, every year the committee kicks in in July, for years we complain about that. So what we are doing, we are solving that problem once and for all by setting up a permanent cooperation with a board of directors that will have, that will conduct the affairs of carnival year round. That is as much as we can do. Um, with regards to 
you know, another administration in place, another minister of culture in place, um, as Colin pointed out, you know, um, they might wish to have a different vision. But we believe that we have established, that we have entrenched some structural um, changes to Spice Mass, that we believe we have placed, plus we have put um, Spice Mass and, and sort of a platform for takeoff, international takeoff. I did a, an interview yesterday with Observer Radio in Antigua. So when you hear me talking about promotion and marketing, we don't stop at simply doing the launches. I did a, a, a half an hour um, interview with Observer Radio yesterday explaining some of the same things that we're speaking about. Um, Caribbean Harmony radio station in St. Lucia was listening and called me five minutes later. When I'm through with you, I have an interview with Caribbean Harmony in St. Lucia promoting Spice Mars. So the, the promotion and the marketing of our carnival, what we are doing, and, and interestingly, um, in one of the interviews we, we, we did in Trinidad last week, um, persons were amazed that so many um, things are happening in Greater for Carnival, so many new initiatives that we, that we are embarking upon, and some of the structures that we are putting in place to ensure that um, Spice Mask is not about us, it's not about the persons who are living now, but we are putting structures in place that whoever comes, and somebody must come, whoever comes after us will have an excellent platform from which to build on. What sort of autonomy would that board have? The board have all the autonomy as any corporation. They, they, the act, how it is set up, they have, the, the, the board runs the corporation, full stop. Um, the powers that you would have heard in the debate um, with regards to the minister having um, is like any other minister with any corporation. For instance, the Minister of Works and his powers with regards to gravel and concrete. Um, the Minister of Tourism with regards to the Board of Tourism. Anytime you have statutory corporations, there is ministerial oversight. Because at the end of the day, if Spice Mouse Corporation or any state corporation um, does not do well, the government gets the, 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 the blame for it. So there is some ministerial oversight. But having said that, there is autonomy, there is independence. Um, and entrenched in the Spice Mass Corporation. The truth is, uh, Spice Mass Incorporation is empowering the stakeholders of, of Carnival. For the very first time in the history of this country, the Mass Band, the Steel Band, the Californian will have a director on the board. Now, as it, under this present system, we operate under the Festivals Act. Right? Under the Festivals Act, the Minister of Culture appoints every Carnival Committee member full stop. That's what happens now. That is what, that is this, now is when you get all the political difference. Under the Spice Mass Corporation, the minister is restricted to six, and in that six, he has to appoint a police officer above the rank of inspector, which is extremely important because security is a big issue for carnival, and then attorney at law, accountant, marketing, promotion. In other words, there's qualification for persons who should be appointed to the corporation. Not just any or anybody, but somebody, whoever is appointed should bring something on the table. And um, so, so you, you're locking the minister with the guys who are looking for quality persons. Once the board is set up, the board will make a decision. And um, I think where we are now, as I've said in the parliament, we need, we need to try to find the best persons for the job, basically. Because at the end of the day, um, the minister cannot, you want to believe that the minister has more work to do than running Spice Mouse Corporation, frankly. You want to ensure that you have excellent people there who understand the vision, who understand Carnival, who understand marketing and development and so on, and who can run with that project. How soon can we see that board appointed? The board will be appointed next week, please, God. Yeah. Um, we just take one last question from the back. I, I, I applaud the appointment of the ambassadors. I think that's a very good move. I also like the vision for Spice Mass 2011. But my question is, how? What, what's the plans or prospects for using these ambassadors post-Carnival or around the rest of the year? Great. Um, as, you have, as you have witnessed, we have um, this year started, um, not this year, 2009 started the launches of Carnival. Um, Ambassador Talpi has been on two of those initiatives, one in Toronto and in Trinidad. Um, so we intend to use the, these ambassadors for that. Also, we have been treating with the Minister of Ministry of Tourism and the Board of Tourism that um, when you go to travel market in London, when Barbados goes to travel market in London, um, the sporting icons go with them. So uh, Garfield Sowers, um, Gabby, the top council. So 
the Barbados, for instance, have used the sporting ambassadors and the cultural ambassadors to market Grenada. So we are saying, when you are going to travel market, when you are going to market Grenada um, overseas in terms of tourism, we are saying that the, our cultural ambassadors, one or two of them, one of them can go at the same time because everything is economics and everything, you know, there's a cost to it. We are saying to the Board of Tourism that we, are pro we have provided you with some of the most eminent um, Grenadians to travel with you and so on. So we see roles for cultural ambassadors in promoting carnival, in promoting cultural platforms, but also in terms of working along with the Board of Tourism to promote Grenada uh, as a cultural capital um, um, in the Caribbean. So those are some of the most of, of tangible um, ways that, that we, can, we can use those cultural ambassadors. And of course locally, um, to, to teach, to mentor, to assist groups and so on in terms of different aspects of the culture. We believe that they can do a lot locally and so on, go to the schools, go to youth groups and so on and so forth. And, 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 and persons, young practitioners, young cultural practitioners can be motivated so that one day they too can become an ambassador for the country. And uh, this is where we will close up this morning's press briefing. I thanks to Mr. Gill and Mr. Dahl for sharing with us uh, their insights on Carnival 2011. Thank you guys for sharing in and for um, also being very proactive in asking your questions and engaging the Senator and the Chairman. Um, thank you very much for coming. Yeah.